gatekeeper of DC society Sally Quinn comes out as a cultist, used hex to kill people. By John Nolt. September 12, 2017. You and I, meaning normal people, we look at our thought leaders, our media and cultural overlords, our ruling class, and oftentimes wonder how they can be so venal and dishonest in pursuit of what they want, and what they want most of all is control over the lives of us normal people, those of us who do not want to control anyone. We just want to be left alone. How many times have we asked, how do they live with themselves? All the lies they tell, the innocent people they destroy, the fake news they publish, the character assassination, the stoking of racial conflict, the hate campaigns, the advocating of violence, the unending cultural bigotry against those of us just minding our own business. How do they sleep at night? Maybe, thanks to the dribs and drabs that have bubbled up over the past year, we are starting to have that question answered. The latest revelation surrounds Sally Quinn, the surviving widow of Ben Bradley, the Washington Post's powerful executive editor from 1968 to 1991, who then served as the paper's vice president until his death in 2014. For nearly 50 years, the entire social and political world of DC revolved around this couple. Bradley and Quinn were the new Camelot. His career took off in large part because of his friendship with John F. Kennedy, the gatekeepers of who was in and who was out, the elite deciders among our ruling class with the extraordinary power of the Washington Post, and by extension the rest of the mainstream media, to abuse and weaponize their will against the rest of us. Well, to put it as bluntly as possible, we are now learning that the Queen of Camelot is an occultist, a witch of sorts who honestly believes according to her own new memoir, that she murdered three innocent people through the dark art of the hex, a young woman who committed suicide after flirting with Quinn's boyfriend, a magazine editor who published an unflattering profile of her, who decades later died of cancer, a psychic who died of a cerebral hemorrhage before the end of the year after telling Quinn something she did not want to hear. The anecdote about the magazine story, published in 1973 and her son, who was born in 1982, informs us that Quinn, who was born in 1941, practiced the occult in the most demonic ways imaginable well into adulthood. Quinn finally ceased hexing others, but not out of a sense of remorse, she outs herself as a believer in the occult and as an erstwhile practitioner of voodoo. And the book is awash in tales of Quinn's occult prowess, she wants people to take this seriously, or at least to believe she takes this seriously. At the very least, she scared herself so badly when her third curse hit its mark, prompting a panic that her previous hexes had been karmically responsible for her son's illness, that she vowed never to dabble in the dark arts again. Quinn's other acts of admitted wickedness include plotting to break up Bradley's marriage, which she did, and using the threat of adultery to bend Bradley to her will. Almost as troubling is the matter-of-fact way in which the Washington Post informs us of this bombshell, in the Outlook section under the chatty headline, Sally Quinn's Hexes, Marital Ultimatums and Visceral Love of Her Son. The story is written by Connie Schultz and her criticism of Quinn is primarily limited to this, had Sally Quinn stayed true to the promise of her book's whimsical title, Finding Magic, a spiritual memoir, she might have led readers on a journey of self-exploration as she shared her stories of help and the many faces of faith in the aftermath of despair. What in God's name is going on here? We have just discovered that one of the primary movers and shakers of the last half century is a practicing occultist, and nothing. Nobody cares. The information is dropped as though Quinn's tell-all is the usual issue about plastic surgeries and sex. Worse still, our ruling class is now joking about Quinn putting a deadly hex on President Trump. In my mind, this explains so, so much. Before I get to that, though, rewind your brain to last year. We now know, at the very least, that John Podesta, one of the most powerful men in DC, is comfortable with the occult practice of spirit cooking, comfortable enough that his own brother invited him to a spirit cookout to protect Podesta from this bombshell, and by extension Hillary Clinton, 
the news broke in the heat of the 2016 presidential campaign, Snopes published a dismissal, which is worth reading. However, as much as Snopes wants to wish it all away, what cannot be wished away, and what Snopes and Podesta's other MSM defenders failed to address, is the fact that in 1996, the hostess of this spirit dinner, Marina Abramovic, wrote a cookbook about spirit cooking with recipes that include fresh breast milk with fresh sperm milk and fresh morning urine. Moreover, Abramovic is a full-blown occultist. Whether or not John Podesta attended this dinner with his brother Tony, a powerful DC lobbyist who admits he did, so what? What in the world is this woman doing swimming in the same circles as the chairman of a presidential nominee's campaign who also served as chief of staff to a sitting president, Bill Clinton? Let's just say it out loud. The most powerful people in our country are either outright occultists, are comfortable with witchcraft and Satanism, or are moving and shaking among those who are. Whether or not you believe in the power of the occult, that does not matter. Also beside the point is whether or not the Poedesters and Quinn and those calling to have Trump hexed believe. What we do know is that these people have completely rejected any notion of a loving God, and moved towards darkness. Furthermore, we also know that this darkness is not about consenting adults behaving badly amongst themselves. Rather, this is about them attempting to harness a power to control others, to manipulate events to their will to hurt or outright kill those who offend or insult them. As I said, this explains so, so much. Especially the fact that everyone is shrugging over the disturbing news, as though it is not news, as though it is normal, or at least as though it should be normal.